Hello, this is Matt Moser, a partner with Alchemy Solutions, and today what I want to cover with you is the basic components of a net cobalt for Windows under Fujitsu calling a .NET routine. Um, and this will just be strictly the basic pieces, um, which are obviously you need a .NET DLL. Um, you need to make that DLL visible to COM Interop, and COM stands for Component Object Model. Um, the DLL needs to have a strong name key assigned to it and you need to register your DLL using RegASM similar to the old ActiveX routines um, and when you use RegASM you can use the code base option and another way that you can also do this is to not use the code base, code base option but use what's referred to as a GAC util or the Global Assembly Cache util and we'll cover all this because um, I'm sure there's questions at this point and then you would create your COBOL program that will use a COM repository definition and you'd be able to create a COM object within it and then invoke your uh, .NET DLL. Um, there will be subsequent tutorials to this that basically cover calls to VB.NET, C Sharp, and COBOL.NET in a little more detail. So by the time you got done going through all four videos, the basics and those, you should have a very good understanding of um, how to put this together. And so uh, continuing on, um, what I'd like to do is show you the C Sharp project. And we'll go ahead and look at the code very quickly because again, we'll cover that in more detail when we hit the C Sharp portion. This is just um, code that has a namespace and a class within the namespace and it's going to be an add function. That's all it's going to do. Add two integers together and return back um, the sum of those two numbers. So uh, the components again that we need, let's kind of take a look at those real quickly. Um, so let's bring back our, uh, our project page within the application. In order to make the, uh, it visible to COM Interop, we select assembly information and we make sure this button is checked, make assembly com visible. This project already has it checked and so we'll press OK. Um, another tab which you'll probably see is there is the build tab. This where it says register for com interop, that's for the sake of the developers. Microsoft put that out there in order to help you out uh, so that you can continue to build and you won't have to use necessarily the tools underneath but you really can't use this for distribution, although it will build for you a type library file, um, a TLB, which we will cover um, shortly as well. And then rolling down a little bit further, the signing, as we said before, it must be signed. Um, you can sign your assembly, and the way you sign it is to choose a strong name key file, which you may already have, and all your applications use, or if you want to create one, you can create new and you can put one out there and Microsoft will create the strong name key for you and save that key name file. In my case, for the purposes of this demo, I simply call it C Sharp DLL 2 SNK and you can see that it's located right here. All right. After you have your DLL um, built and you have it com visible and it's signed, the next step in the process is to use the register tool, um, I'm sorry, is ordered to export your type libraries out of your file. And the way you can do this is you go to Programs, um, Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 Tools, and we're going to go to the Command Prompt. Pull this down so that you can see it. And this is basically where those tools are kept. I have, as part of my path, set up this particular folder. And so um, the tools that are of interest are TLB, EXP, which is the type library exporter. And you can always get help by using slash question mark on any of these tools. Um, and what that does, it takes your DLL and puts out any of the routines or types um, to make them visible to COM. So, and when you get done, you look in your project folder and if you're bin, and debug or release and you can see a .tlb file sitting out there. You need to have that .tlb file out there in order to become visible. And again, 
Um, you'll see all those as we go into the specific languages. The uh, other thing is when you get done um, doing your type library export, you can run reg ASM, which by the way also has an interface to TLB. And in order to run reg ASM, the, we would probably we would use the code base option, um, which you can see right here. And so in this particular case, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, let's do the TLB EXP, which we did earlier. I showed just a second ago, and we're going to call it C sharp DLL 2 dot DLL. And you'll notice that it's saying that it can't find it because I am not in that particular folder. So let me exit out of this, and I have this up and running over here, which is where it's at. And I'll go ahead and type in TLB EXP space C sharp DLL2 dot DLL. And you'll notice this is where I actually have my sample kept, C sharp DLL. So I want to do a type library export. And if I do a directory, you can see the TLB file. Now I want to register it, so it registers it in the registry. And let's go ahead and do that. RegASM, C sharp, DLL2 dot DLL. And again, this is any .NET DLL that you wish to um, make com visible so you can call it from NetCobol for Windows. And I'm going to say slash codebase, which means register, and you can look in the registry looking for codebase, and you can see that it registered in this particular directory. And the type was successfully registered. If you wish to register in what's called the global assembly cache, you can use a function called gacutil minus i and the name of the DLL, but you don't want to do that in conjunction with the, um, the code base switch. So you, if you want to use gacutil, you would simply first type in regasm and then the name of your DLL and then follow that up with gacutil minus i and dot DLL, which we're not going to do right now because I'm registering against the code base. And so that's really about it there. So we have the type library exported and we have it registered inside our DLL. And then our last step is to put it together a COBOL program, which has repository class com, a reference built towards that, which I call ActiveX DLL, my com class name, which is our function we just built. And again, more to follow in detail for each uh, individual project.net for VB, C Sharp, or COBOL. And then we're going to go to COM create object using the COM class name we specified above, returning an ActiveX DLL. And then we're going to invoke the add function that we looked at earlier. And so to run, let's just go ahead and run this. And I'll bring this down. And you notice that it ran fine. So basically, those were the pieces. And again, this is everything that you need to make it work. If you have questions, um, there is a lot to it, but once you get the steps done, it's down, it's pretty easy. Um, you can always reach me at Matt underscore Moser at Mosersoft.com um, or go to the partner page up underneath Mosersoft, the Alchemy partner page, where you can reach our um, great support center at Alchemy. Take care. Thanks.